What Jesus is telling the people in Nazareth and all of us is that the Messiah has come for all people and not just for some. The Messiah will be going to all the people, especially those we think are different, even those we love to hate. God wants wholeness for us, but God wants wholeness for the whole world, too. Now, it's natural for us to resist this message. It's hard for us to welcome and affirm and serve the outsider. I'm sure we're probably hardwired to gather into groups. I imagine it increased our first ancestors' chances of survival to be in groups. We find comfort in groups because we form our identity there. And we fear the outsider in part because they're different and they mess up our little world. We fear the person who is different. We fear the people we don't know. But God doesn't. No matter where we live, whether we live in a small town or a big city, our world can get extremely small. It happens quickly without us realizing it. A small world is a simple world. It's not complicated. Some are in, some are out. Some are accepted, some are not. Some are good, some are bad. But God doesn't see the lines we draw on the sand. God doesn't care about zip codes or national boundaries or class divisions or ethnic background or skin tone or anything that divides. God cares about people. And God wants people to be whole and live in harmony. And the Messiah will be going to the divisions among us to help reconcile. And as the body of Christ, Jesus will be bringing us along with him to those boundaries we'd rather stay away from, to the people we'd rather stay away from. And Jesus will invite us to extend a hand. I read a fascinating news story yesterday. <coughs> the headline was, Faiths Unite in Relief Efforts for Haiti. You may have seen it too. It was a story about how different religious groups are working together to try to bring relief to Haiti. They told of a Christian who found himself among shouts of Arabic prayers as he packed boxes of canned goods and sealed the boxes with stickers that read, Muslims help, uh, Muslim Americans help Haiti. The story told of the National Church of Scientology chartering a 168-seat plane that carried doctors, Mormon relief workers, and Scientology relief workers. It also told of 160,000 pounds of tents and supplies the Mormon church headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah, was delivering to Haiti through workers from Islamic Relief USA. Now let me repeat that. Mormons are working with Muslims to help the people of Haiti, who, Pat Robertson says, Pat Robertson, said, Pat Robertson says, brought their suffering on themselves because they practice voodoo. Now that's a complicated little scene, isn't it? We're watching the worst tragedy of the 21st century unfold before our eyes. And if you ask me where Christ is in all this suffering, I'd say Christ is right there in the middle of the Mormons and the Muslims and the voodoo, holding it all together, not caring about doctrine, but caring about justice caring about God's effort to bring wholeness, to bring healing, to ease suffering. Now, others may not agree with me on this, and that's fine, but when you hear these stories of Jesus going to the Gentiles, who were pagans, then you start to see the movement and power of Christ in those places where bridges are being built between people that you never thought would join hands and work together. That's the Christ I believe in. That's the Christ I give my life to. And I think our Bible story is telling us that if we ask where Jesus is going, the answer is to the Gentiles, to those other people, to the unnecessary divisions that we have between us. And if we ask where Jesus is going to take us, the answer is to whatever boundary or border is closest. And that's good news, because we won't find healing by going anywhere else. May Christ lead us where we need to go. Amen.